Monday, July 3. Costly Redemption, Lavish Forgiveness Sin had been a dark, dominating force in the lives of the members of Paul's audience. Paul can describe them in their prior existence as the walking dead, dead in trespasses and sins, it reads in Ephesians 2 verse 1, yet walking or living as Satan commanded them, as it reads right through. Well, let's just read chapter 2 verses 1 to 3. And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others." Enslaved to sin and Satan, they had no ability to free themselves. They needed rescue. God has done so through his gracious actions in Christ, and Paul celebrates two new blessings of God's grace in the lives of believers, redemption and forgiveness. Read Ephesians 1 verses 7 and 8. Redemption is an idea that is used frequently in the New Testament, Compare the use of the idea in Colossians 1, Titus 2, and Hebrews 9. What themes do these passages share in common with Ephesians 1, 7, and 8? Ephesians 1, beginning at verse 7, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. And we compare that with Colossians 1, 13 and 14, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. And Titus 2, 13 and 14, Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. And then Hebrews 9, verse 15. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. The Greek word translated redemption in Ephesians 1 verse 7 is apolytrosis, originally used for buying a slave's freedom or paying to free a slave. One can hear echoed the voice of the slave trader auctioning his merchandise and the cold grinding of a slave's manacles. When the New Testament discusses redemption, it highlights the costliness of setting the slaves free. Our freedom came at an extreme cost. In him, Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, we read in Ephesians 1 and verse 7. The idea of redemption also celebrates God's gracious generosity in paying the high price of our liberty. God gives us our freedom and dignity. We are no longer enslaved. Alistair E. McGrath, in what was God doing on the cross, page 78 writes, to be redeemed is to be treated as a person, not an object. It is to become a citizen of heaven rather than a slave of the earth. End of quote. Note carefully that the idea that God pays the price of redemption to Satan is a medieval, not a biblical one. God neither owes nor pays Satan anything. The benefits of Calvary also include the forgiveness of our trespasses, as we read in verse 7 of chapter 1. On the cross, Christ takes upon himself the price of our sin, both past and future. As it says in Colossians 2.14, cancelling the record of debt that stand against us with its legal demands. In doing this work of redemption and forgiveness through Christ, God is acting as our generous Father, with the riches of His grace being lavished upon us, as we read in chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. 
And so to finish the day, what does it mean to you that through Christ's atoning sacrifice you are forgiven and redeemed? What if you feel that you are unworthy of it? Hint, you are unworthy. That's the whole point of the cross. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.